Pennsylvania Turnpike. Howdy, stranger. Howdy, mister. Mind if I come in and sit a while? Nope, reckon I don't. Gets sort of dad blame loose along this highway. Uh, much obliged. Uh, my feet wouldn't hold up another mile. Are you hitching? Yep. Uh, going fur? Don't know. Uh, you come fur? Yep. Come right, smart piece. Hmm, you're getting pretty old being hitchhiking. Get many rides? Yep. Had anything to eat lately? Not much. Coffee smells good. Mm, it is good. Make it myself. How about a cup? Warm you up. All right. Matter of fact, I'll have one with you. Got any manse bread? Any what? Manse bread. Never heard of it. No. I forgot. Reckon you never have. Here you are, mister. Nice and hot. How much? Oh, just a nickel. Well, what a nickel is, but take it out of that. What's obliged? Hey, hold on. This ain't no nickel. What's that, mister? I say this ain't no nickel. It's a gold coin. Hey, don't you know it's against the law to have gold in your possession these days? Since what law? Why, well, well, we went off the gold standard years ago. Everybody turned in their gold. Well, they turned into the government. And, well, they got silver in exchange. I see. You best return my coin. Well, this coin is old, ain't it, stranger? Somewhat. Yeah, old. Got the head of the King of England on it. Can't see the date very well. Let's see, seventeen hundred yeah, something. Take this coin instead. I gave you the gold one by mistake. Well, brother, I ain't making no mistake when I give it back to you. To my way of thinking, right now, that gold coin ain't worth a plug nickel. Yeah. I think you'll find this one's legal tender. Yeah, thanks. How about a sandwich? A what? Uh, a sandwich. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, uh, you're a queer one. <laughs> yeah. Wrapped up in this wax paper. A sandwich. Never seen nothing like that before. Yeah? Well, why don't you try one? Hold the house. Eh? I said try one. No charge, yours. Oh. Thanks. Good coffee. Yeah, got to admit it is. Folks around here always have a good word to say for Joe Davis and his coffee. Uh, don't you know where you're heading for, stranger? No, nope. haven't the slightest idea. How come? You mean you're just a roaming about with no particular end in mind? No. I've planned what I intend to do for years. Well, what are you intending to do? That I'll discuss with no one. Okay, okay. Don't get the idea I'm nosing into your business. Uh, how's the sandwich? What's that? I said, uh, how's the sandwich? Oh, oh, this. Not so good. Tastes funny. Well, that's good boiled ham. Don't like it. Mm, well, <laughs> you got no kick coming. Didn't have to pay for it. I intend to pay you. Nope, no charge. But I always pay all my debts. Well, this is one you don't have to, stranger. Especially since you don't like the thing. I've paid every debt I ever owed. Except one. Well, one's not so bad. You'll probably get it paid off someday. Yeah. I'll pay it. I waited long enough. I can wait a while longer. Want more coffee, stranger? No. This is plenty. By the way, do you happen to know many people in these parts? Mm -hmm. Quite a few, yes. They were run on the... Any folks with red hair? Red hair? Yeah. Well, let me think. No. No, can't say the hair. Why? Oh, I'm just interested in folks with red hair. Are you? Only take rides in cars with men with red hair. Why is that? Oh, I got a pretty good reason. You see, the man I owe that debt to... Has red hair. Oh, has he? Brilliant red. Hmm. Uh, where are you putting up for the night? Ain't sure. Depends. Well, there's a tourist cabin about two miles up the turnpike. Might stop in there. 
place have many customers? Yep, yep, quite a few along this time of year. Well, stop there, then, and have a look around. Mister, if, uh, if you don't mind my saying so, <laughs> you've got me puzzled. That's so? all? Yeah, you sure have. Those, uh, those clothes you're wearing, never seen anything like them before in my life. You probably never will again. What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing especially. <laughs> You're sure the mysterious one? Uh, you better have another cup of coffee. Oh, no, thanks. Well, how about a cigarette then, huh? No, I'm old fashioned. I smoke a pipe. Well, okay. Throw it up then. Uh, say, what kind of tobacco is that? Hey, oh, it's King's Choice. Never heard of it. No. Reckon you never have. Something new? Older than you were. Mm-hmm. Where can you buy it? Reckon you can't anymore. Oh, quit making it, huh? About a hundred years or so back. Hmm? You wouldn't remember. Oh, you're ribbing me, huh? Of course I wouldn't remember a hundred years back. Neither would you. You'd be surprised, mister. What do you mean? Nothing. <laughs> Especially. I don't get it. Look. You smoking tobacco a hundred years old. Nothing particularly remarkable about that, is there? I always say what's old belongs to the old. I reckon you're not more than 60. 60? <laughs> sure, 65 at most. My friend, suppose you take 60, double it, and add a century. What? Double 60 and add 100? Why, that's... That's 220. Your arithmetic is excellent. Have a match? 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 Where? Oh, yes. Sure, match. Here you be. Thank you. Ah, you have a customer. Oh, yes. Uh, generally, somebody stops for a few gallons of gas long about this time. Better throw away that cigarette around that gasoline. Be back a minute, old hammer. Yes, sir. A little gas? No, I'd like a little information. Well, got a lot of that, too. Uh, can you tell me the way to Pine Knob? Pine Knob? What's that, tourist camp? No, it's a town. Pine Knob, Pennsylvania. Never heard of it. It's out this way someplace. Supposed to be about 80 miles out of Pittsburgh in this direction. Well, see, Pittsburgh's about 78 miles back. Well, then I should be pretty close. Never heard tell of no Pine Knob. Been living here, man and boy, for 40 years. Ain't never seen nothing of the place or heard tell of it. Well, I know it's out here someplace. I've followed my directions here. I don't know whether to take that crossroad or follow the turnpike. Sorry, right, can't tell you, mister. Perhaps I can. Eh? <laughs> oh, you. Fine knob, you say, mister? Yes. It's a small town somewhere in this neighborhood. Not in this neighborhood, it ain't. Uh, you don't happen to remember anything about it, do you, old-timer? That's a nice hat you're wearing. Huh? I said that's a nice hat you're wearing. Uh, yeah, thanks. Did you ever hear of Pine Knob? Mind if I see it? See what? Your hat. Oh, forget my hat. You know anything about Pine Knob? I might. After I've seen the hat. Look here. If you know how I can get to Pine Knob, I'll... Hey, 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 look, mister. Let him have a gander at the hat. You were the old boy. He uh, he hasn't got all these marbles. Oh, oh, very well. Uh, here. You can buy it in any hat shop for $10. Free initials if you want them. Yeah. Quite nice. What's that? The hat? Oh, you haven't even looked at it. No. I was admiring the gentleman's hair. What about my hair? I said it's nice. Bright red. Yeah, red hair runs in my family. Now, uh, how about the hat back and a little information? Oh, your initials in the band. K.M. Could the last name be Minor? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you saw my driver's license on the steering post. No. Well, how'd you know? I just hoped I was right. Oh, hang it all. Do you or don't you know how I can get to Pine Knob? Yes, I know. Will you tell me then? No, I can't do that. Why not? Because the way is seldom traveled. You'd never find it by directions. Then can you go there with me to show me the way? There's nothing I'd like better. To take you to Pine Knob. Yeah. Well, now, that's more like it. I'll pay you for whatever your time's worth. I'll collect all right. But I assure you my times are practically no value whatsoever. Uh, come on around and get in. 
I'll ride in the back. No, uh, come on in front with me. No, thank you. I prefer the back. Say, mister, you better use the old boy as much as you can. He ain't as bright as he probably used to be. Oh, all right. Uh, all right, old timer. Hop in. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Come back and see me. Well, I, I see him come and I see him go. But that old gent beats anything I've ever set eyes on. Oh, the old man dropped his bag of tobacco. Hmm. Almost half full. King's Choice. The Smoker's Friend. Raymond Tobacco Company. Established. 1756. We leave the turnpike in a minute or two. Uh, then how far? Not far. Hmm. The road good? Not so good. I say, does my chatter bore you, old timer? No. Oh. Not especially. Yeah, you give me the impression you don't want to talk. People talk too much nowadays. Me, I like to talk. Especially when I'm driving. It helps make the miles go faster. The turn up ahead. Yeah, where? Off to the right. Well, there's no place to turn off. Yes, there is. You see it. There. See? Well, yes. But that, that road, it, it wasn't there a moment ago. It's been there for years. It's the road to take. <sighs> This isn't any ordinary road. Right. It isn't. No automobile tracks. Never been an automobile on this road. I I don't understand. You will, presently. Nothing but wagon tracks. That's right. Wagons. And a stagecoach. Stagecoach? Yes. You can see the hoof marks in the soft earth. Oh, I was noticing. Six coal black horses, the pride of Pennsylvania. What's that? Nothing important. I see. Look behind. Behind? Yes. Look, where's the turnpike? We have left it. Far behind. Oh, not far. Less than a half a mile. We should be able to see it from here. No. It's nowhere in view. And the buildings along the turnpike, where are they? All of that is past. Past? Yes. There is no turnpike. There are no buildings. Nothing but open prairie land. Trees. Hills. Tall grass. No fences, no other roads except this one. It's the only road for miles around. But where does it take us? To Pine Knob. That's where you wanted to go? Well, yes, but I... You asked me to show you the way to Pine Knob. This is it. Well, everything's changed, so Suddenly, everything's different. Yes, naturally. But why? Did you ever ask yourself what time really is? Time? Yes, Mr. Miner. Time. I don't follow you. Suppose a long time ago something had happened to you. Suppose that incident was so important, so outstanding in your life, it was necessary for you to do something about it. I still don't understand. Let me put it into the present instead of the past. Suppose today... Something should happen to you. Suppose it is so out of the ordinary that you'd never forget it. Probably something you think needs revenge. Revenge? And suppose you decided your spirit would never rest until you'd found that revenge even though many scores of years had passed away. Well, I, I don't understand. Now, what would you do, Mr. Minor? What could you do but roam from place to place seeking that revenge? You're talking over my head. Am I? You certainly are. What I'm getting at is this. If you'd find yourself in just such a situation, Time would suddenly have no meaning to you. You Think no more about the past or the present or the future. Time would be something unknown to you. 
things you call the future now wouldn't be future at all. Incidents you call past wouldn't be past. They'd be now. What you call present, all rolled up into one. Yeah, that's a strange way of reasoning. Not so strange once you've experienced it. Have you ever experienced it? I assure you, yes. You mean that things that have happened in the past are actually happening now? Precisely. And things in the future are taking place now, too? Naturally. One case being possible, the other naturally follows. Oh, I'm just some philosopher's theory. It's much more than a mere theory. Oh, you know better than that, and so do I. What's happened in the past has happened. What's going to happen certainly isn't taking place now. Possibly I'll change your mind about that before this day ends. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, not me, mister. By the way, you haven't told me your name. Names are unimportant. Only incidents are important. Yeah. You haven't said how you knew my name. That was quite obvious. Your red hair. The initials in your hat band. I still don't see how you There's knew. There's Pine Knob. Ahead. Yeah. Down in the valley. Yes. Where did it get its name, Pine Knob? Because in the center of the town you'll find a little mound with three pine trees growing from it. It was under these trees that men have been trying for their lives. It's from them that men have been hanged. Hmm. That's a pleasant thought. The town seems deserted. Yes. I suppose it is by now. What do you mean? You see. There. The stage office is over there. And the stage is in. See? Across the road. Pull up here. Across from it. Yeah, right. So this is Pine Knob. I see. That man on the stagecoach with the reins in his hands. Other man handing up that metal box. Quiet. Listen to what they say. All right, Hank. That's the gold. Better take good care of it. You know where they're going to get this gold? Going right on through to Kelby. If anybody tries to stop the stage this trip, I'll be ready for him. Pass along, partner. See you in a week. Come on, boy. Get up there. Gee, get up. <laughs> Those two men. The one on the stagecoach. Exactly. He, he looks and talks exactly like you, and the other one like me. You must follow that stage. Start the car. I, I don't understand all this. Start the car. Follow the stage. I'd take my oath that those two men are it's exactly... time to talk. Follow the stage. Oh, what is this, a dream? No. Oh, I've waited a long time for this day. What do you mean? Yes. Nine score years I've waited. Nine score? More than three normal lifetimes... And finally, the day is here. Look here. Whoever you are, would you mind telling me just what this is all about? Why are we following that stagecoach? Yeah. You see? It's beginning. What's beginning? The stage. See? You stopped. Yeah. Something's wrong. More than you think. Drive right up behind it. Maybe we can help. No, there's nothing we can do. Stop right behind the stage. Yeah. Hey, look. Look at that man standing at the side of the stagecoach, talking to the driver. I'm watching him. He's the man with the red hair. The man who looks exactly like me. And the other one on the stage, he's the exact image of you. Quiet. Watch what happens. Listen. What's up, partner? Called me out of town, did you? Yeah. I sure did, Hank. I reckon I'd better take that gold. Take the gold? Where? Just take it. Hand it down, Hank. Hold on, hold on. Why do you want that gold, Ken? Stop asking questions. Just hand down the box. I don't think I'd better, Ken. Now look, I mean business. You... You drawing a gun on me, partner? I mean business, Hank. Hand down that gold. You're, you're robbing this gold. I'm taking it and clearing out. You tell folks it's settling out west. 
I aim to go there. Can. I done trusted you like a brother. I never thought the day would come when you... Hand me down the gold, Hank. This gold is going to kill me. It ain't going no farther than it is right now. I'm taking it with me. Put away your gun, Ken. Don't argue with me, Hank. I'll shoot you if I have to. Then fight, Ginger, you'll have to. I ain't handing down this gold. Keep those hands on the reins. Not on your life, partner. Don't go for that gun. <laughs> I didn't shoot you. I wasn't going for no gun. You've murdered me. No. For heaven's sakes, this isn't real. I've never fired a gun in my life. You think it isn't real? No. No, well, it can't be. Now, do you understand what I meant by no past, no future? That man on the stage, you... One hundred and eighty years ago on this spot. But it can't be you. That man on the stage was shot. He fell. He's lying there on the ground now. Hey, turn around. See for yourself. Gone. Everything's gone. Everything but you and me. I didn't kill you. That man with the red hair. The one who spoke like you, looked like you, was the first member of your family to settle in this country. He was my partner. I trusted him. He murdered me. But I, I didn't. How? The debt is about to be paid. No. No, you can't blame me for something that happened almost 200 years ago. I waited this long for my revenge. I won't let it pass by now. Get into the car. No. No, keep away. Don't come near me. Don't touch that wheel. Time has come. I'm driving now. No, no, I say. There's no way to escape. You can't murder me. I had nothing to do with that you shooting. You can't escape. I will escape. I will, I will. You're doomed. I knew you were some devil. You brought me here to kill me. But you can't. You can't. You can't. The road ends around the turn up there. Nothing but a thousand foot drop down the mountainside. <laughs> Pennsylvania Turnpike. Tonight's original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop, originating in the studios of WKY. Ben Morris played Ken Minor. Fred Wayne was heard as Hank, and Muir Height was the filling station attendant. Next Friday night at the same time, listen to the 19th in this series of unusual and original tales of dark fantasy. Created by Scott Bishop. Next week's story is called Convoy for Atlantis. A fantastic yarn of ships that disappear. Disappear in the night. And of strange and valuable treasures which arise from the sea. An adventure that takes us down to the very bottom of the mighty Atlantic Ocean. For a special observation of the Convoy for Atlantis. Don't miss this weird tale of an ancient race that lives again on a mighty sunken continent. Tom Paxton speaking. Dark Fantasy comes to you from Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company.